Okay. So what I had come to last time was we start from a finite group which we call G. This leads to the group algebra. Which I think are called C G. Right? And let me use the standard notation. We have the left regular representation. Which I can write as C G is acting on C G. This is a notation you often find. CG acts on CG okay. and what we were trying to do was to for the specific case G is equal to SN we want to write to write CG as a direct sum okay. let me call it L alpha J j going from 1 to sigma alpha summation alpha where okay, l alpha dimension f of l alpha j is sigma alpha and uh, alpha l alpha j uh, no, any, any any gamma l alpha j is contained in L of J if gamma is in the group algebra. Okay. The group is acting on the algebra is acting on itself. I mean notice that we suddenly jump from groups to algebras. Okay. Here you can still keep the group, but here you have no choice. So we might as well take linear combinations on this side. Okay. Then we know that every irreducible representation of dimension sigma alpha occurs sigma alpha times. That is uh, put here, this thing is our dimension sigma alpha and it is invariant by the group action. Okay. And the number of times the dimension representation sigma alpha occurs is sigma alpha times. These are all isomorphic representations, identical things. Then I sum over all alpha, okay. Alpha goes over classes, okay. That is, okay, partitions of n, okay. So let us say lambda 1 to lambda n, okay. Lambda i in non negative integers. Summation lambda i is equal to n. This means non negative. Okay. So, this is a partition of n. Lambda 1 minus lambda 2 gives the number of cycles or length 1 that we in the elements we are considering in the class. Lambda 2 minus lambda 3 gives uh, cycles of length 2 and so on. Okay. Then for young, what we did was for a, for a young diagram or a young tableau, tableau, okay. we de defined a young, a young frame. No, uh, I'm making the wrong step. For a young frame, M frame is empty. Okay. Young tableau is obtained by putting okay, uh, 
e f this uh, integers okay from this set 1 up to n in boxes hmm. in tableau we fill it in for example we had this example so young tableau okay so from the here you see that there are factorial n tableau for a frame then associated young tableau okay p okay so for a given tableau P is a horizontal permutation okay. if it permutes okay, entries only along rows. And Q is a, a vertical okay, only along columns. Okay, this is what we had. So for a given tableau, I write like this. Okay. And then as last time I gave you the overall theorem, okay. Theorem. One set, let us say, set for a given tableau set P is summation P horizontal, of course, Q is summation epsilon q q okay this is a summation of all the horizontal permutations for example for that diagram this will be identity plus 1 2 okay. this i think it is 1 2 yeah this will be 1 3 so this will be identity minus 1 3 okay. theorem is 1 this thing CG multiplied by PQ carries an irreducible representation of S n. You will get at least one. Pick one tableau, you will get one. I will try to find all of the LL phases in a minute. Okay. Secondly, Uh, all tableau same frame give equivalent IRS But uh, but uh, different frames give inequivalent IRS. I am not proving it, but I will give you the construction. I mean the frame describe a class okay. so this is not unnatural but we have to know how to go from there to a representation okay. 
that involves some more work which we, we won't pause to do okay. but the rules will be clear and I checked it this construction for a horizontal which we check that if I take this row this gives you the trivial representation okay. I checked it and I check that if I take this okay, you get one dimensional okay, uh, 1D representation right of Sn over An where A is alternating group okay, so it is Z2 okay. we check these two now I want to know all the L alpha J's. this simply says that the, this will give some com, some combination on the S okay. there are many ways of picking <coughs> from here a subspace transforming in for a given alpha there are many ways of combining these L alphas so that I get the same representation because I can make combinations in the index J okay. nothing will happen because the group is acting uh, grouping acting on the left so same thing is happening many many times okay. so I have to have more rules so so let me show you another concept okay. it is called standard index diagrams this idea is very useful when we go into Lie groups a diagram so a tableau or diagram is standard if the numbers increase from left to right and downwards let us see let us look at examples S3 by the way I should have um, written down some problems which you say I would again say I say that they are good problems they are useful let me see if I can find them What did I do? Here it is. Yeah, I don't know whether I gave the this set. Okay, try. It. Last week I don't know where I gave them. Okay, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, then twenty-three. 24, 25. They are not exactly routine problems okay, and illustrate some ideas. Okay. There is, for example, one curious problem that the permutation group on four objects, S4, okay. S4 is peculiar because it has an invariant subgroup, S4. It has some invariant subgroup, so the factor group is S3. So it is H is not so this S3 is S4 divided by H. H is not alternating group. Okay. You can check dimensions. This is 6, this is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, no? 24. Right? 
So, 6 must be divisible S4 into 1 into 3 into 24, S3 is 6. So, S4 over what is the dimension of this? I am not dividing. Twelve, no. six. What is twenty-four divided by six? Huh? Four, four, four. four. So there's a four-dimensional. H is four-dimensional. It is. So if you try to, it's a good. Um, it is an interesting problem. It's not. Uh, it's not obvious. Okay. You have to do little thinking. Okay. You have to look at the uh, way things are. Uh, hanging around and after a while you can check. After all there are not so many groups, finite groups with four elements, so you can figure it out. Okay. There are other problems of the similar kind here. Okay. Okay. So I want to look at S3. So uh, standard would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, right. Non standard will be, for example, 2, 1, 3, or it may be that is 1 and 2. Oh, I see. It, it may be that it is increasing here. Yeah. No. What do I need here? So it should be decreasing here. So I write up one here. I write two here and a three here. Okay. These are non-standard. These are standard. Then, well, claim or theorem or whatever it is. This is proved actually in Werner. The number of standard index diagrams. is equal to dimension of the associated irreducible representation by counting. Okay. It is given by the Hooke rule. For example, here there are two standard diagrams. Okay. The hook rule also gives you two. Okay. So uh, for S3, okay. that's right. Standard index diagram. Let me call it SID. For this, for a given frame, of the frame. For each frame you get a different, okay. for each frame you have an irreducible representation up to equivalence okay. and they are given by, the dimension is given by counting the standard index diagrams. I do not know what the matrix matrix elements are, okay. who could, okay. for this diagram okay, the SID is 1, 2, 3. 1, 3, 2, yeah. Okay. 
so dimension is 2 and hook rule is what well remember that in numerator you put factorial 3 divided by 1 times 3 times 1 2 hmm? you can try uh, more elaborate things for example uh, I don't know S4 let me so I need a partition no? so let me take 3 and 1 no? lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is 4 and there are no more just for exercise so the standard index diagrams I will probably make mistakes okay, is it has to increase left to the right and down so it could be 1, 2, 3, 4 could be what 1, 2, 4, 3 okay. I could not have 1 here I guess uh, I could have here 2 Right. and here I could have 1, 3 how many boxes and 4 so I got 2, 3, 4 so here I could put I cannot put 3 here if I put 2 I cannot put 3 here is that exhausting is there anything else I, I do not know can you guess are they any more huh? is, it, is it exhausting yeah so let us look I mean I know how to check it by hook rule Cha bottom can only be 2 3 or 4 cannot be 1 okay. for 2 I can put 1 here and it increases no? for 2 I can put 3 here but then where will I put 1? So this only thing. Okay. 1 is always at the corner. Yeah. 1 is always at the corner. Right. Then the depending on what I put here is finished. So hook rule. Will be factorial 4 divided by hook of length 1, 2, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Right. So two, so it is three. Okay, is matching. Okay. Is it okay? Now, here is a grand theorem finding. L alpha j and its basis put with the, with the comma explicitly okay. once I know this the matrix elements or the representation can be worked out okay. so once we have this The matrices of IRR can be worked out by acting on the basis. Okay. 
So, step one. For a given frame, so I am fixing the frame. Okay. Where, which is IRR of dimension sigma alpha which I now call D for simplicity, which I now call, which we now call D for a moment. Okay. Label the standard index diagrams as T1, T2 up to T T D. You label it. Then, so these are diagrams. Okay. Let pi j in S n be the permutation. from T1 to Tj. Let me look at an example, this Tj. So, pi j acting on T1 gives me Tj. For example, okay, S3, one two three. I call this T1, I call T2 as one three two okay. so here there is only one permutation pi two which is I must I don't want I want to take two to three okay. so it is one to one one to one two to three three to two Yeah, this is a diagram. So it's permutation. We'll take that to this tab tableau. Right? Look at this. It will permute two to three and three to two. I get this. Okay. Particular one is always fixed. Huh? Particular one is always fixed. In this case. Uh, is that true? Always. Yeah. Why is that so? Oh, it is increasing. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. A bit suspicious of you. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, you are right. One is always, one is always at the corner. Mm. One is always at the corner in this notation. Okay. Now, yeah. Okay. I'll come. I'll ex I'll. All of them will play a democratic role. Just one second. Yeah. Let. P Q be associated with T one. So the P is the sum of all the horizontal permutations. Q is the sum of all the vertical permutations for diagram T one. Okay. Then. Okay. 
claim is this thing uh, C G the full group algebra with actually uh, I think I should call Y just for normalization I think it is D divided by factorial N P Q okay. Y squared equal to Y. I just normalize it with constants, so it is like a projector. Okay, carries an IR. This is something I said already. This Y is associated with diagram one, and a basis for CGY is simply the following y pi 1 pi 2 y pi 3 y etc pi d y yeah so pi 1 y is regarded as 1 okay I can show you what I mean okay y is an element this is an element of the group uh, this category space hmm? and I know what I mean by multiplying this okay. so this gives you a full basis for example if I look at this one okay example okay I wrote t1 s3 case okay so p is some of all the horizontal permutations so e plus 1 2 Q is the vertical permutations, right? So it is simply one three. Uh, horizontal E is the sum of all the one three is vertical. Uh, do I need E? I am a little bit confused. One second. I am making mistake. So it should be E minus 1 3 ok this is sign there then this Y is P Q times D in this case 2 divided by factorial 3 and the basis is y and then I uh, see what is the permutation it takes here it is it is 2 3 right hmm. so since I know this this is it requires some work you, have to, you can apply elements of s3 on this basis we express them in terms of the basis and find the matrices. Okay. Um, I think that there is a there are explicit formula given in Berner again, but I have not checked it recently. Okay. I think so. Now, for the so this gives me one of the L alphas. This gives. One for the L alpha J. Okay. Now, two, for example, there should be two such things. Now, choose okay. say T uh, T two as new T one prime put it in the first place find this pq repeat okay. the rest you repeat etc to get all alpha l alpha j okay. no 
whichever you pick one order, do it. Then if you want to order them, you have to go on repeating. Okay. And this, uh, this is actually direct sum of all the whole thing. There is no, uh, it is actually direct sum. The, in the sense that if you take any two of these things, okay, the intersection is just the zero vector. Okay. But only thing you should remember is the matrices. of S n in this basis may not be unitary. Okay. But you can make them unitary by a change of basis, okay. but can be made unitary. By, by general theorem, no? by, change of, by a change of basis, we can make it, we can make them unitary. One second. Hmm? For S3, I have worked the thing. Okay. You do not get unitary, there are six matrices to work out. Okay. You can work it out. Actually, uh, to simplify calculations, okay, you do not have to do too much work. Okay. Uh, finding the matrices is simplified. by following for sn it is not too difficult okay. what is it the, the, the uh, this one and 1 2 up to n okay, generate sn That is, if you know one permutation, one transposition, the fully cyclic permutation, then you can generate all elements of S n. Okay. So you need to do only this to find only this and that. Okay. From there you can, by simply matrix manipulation, get everything. Okay. The reason is the following. So call, let me call this A and call this B. For any S, for any S in S n is a product of transpositions. Hmm? So, is clear now. What will happen? B A B inverse. What what will that be? Cyclic permutation. No? So we'll get what? One two will go into two three. Okay. Etc. Okay. Repeatedly do it to get all. Elements like k, k plus 1. So you get all adjacent transpositions this way. Okay. But let me look at this one. Let us say for i, let me do exactly the example here less than equal less than k. Suppose I look at this i k k k plus 1 the inverse of k k plus 1 which is k k plus 1 what will happen 
k plus 1 goes to k, k goes to i, right? That's it, no? So k plus 1 will go to i. k plus 1 goes to k, k goes to i, nothing. Eh? k goes to k plus 1, so k does not change. And from here you see i goes to k plus 1. Right? So this is i k plus 1. Right? So I have moved this index one bit. So okay. we can get all transpositions. From adjacent ones, yeah, because I can move example. Okay, I can get, for example, if you want two four, you take two three, then you conjugate with three four. So I can move it one step. Okay. Two four is two three. So this adjacent, adjacent, adjacent. But I moved it one step. So there are ten steps apart. I start and go on doing. Okay. Step by step, I move it out. So I get all transpositions. But any element of the permutation group is a product of transpositions. So I get all the permit, all of the permutation group from these two elements. Okay. So if you calculate that you can do the rest. You can just uh, rest is uh, routine activity. Yeah. What? So okay. So I will uh, s suddenly stop finite groups here. Okay. There is suddenly not suddenly. I think that uh, what we have done is sort of basic uh, finite groups okay. and you have some control on SN. Okay. It is SN stuff I took the trouble of telling not because so just vaguely but it comes back when you do um, SUN or um, when you do quantum field theory you get all these Lie groups okay, which you have to do if you want to do model building or, and these things come. Okay. This activity of standard index diagrams and so on come there you actually want to calculate things by hand okay, for a new group. So that is the reason I did it. Okay. So now I want to look at let me just say Lie groups. Finite groups play a very important role in molecular physics. Okay. They are the stuff of which molecular physics, much of molecular physics is made of. For example, um, when you say that uh, ethylene, you know what it is, no? You see this diagram, carbon, carbon, hydrogen bonds. You must have seen this diagram. Huh? Ethane or ethylene? I think that is the same. Huh? Oh, ethane. But ethane, ethylene, what is the name between friends? It's okay. <laughs> I thought it was ethylene. Ethane, this one. When you study molecular shapes like this in the so called Born Oppenheimer approximation, you are giving rigid. Molecules are treated as rigid bodies in some approximation, which is good approximation for um, low lying levels, rotation levels. Okay. What do you call it? Now, what happens is how does a finite group come here? It comes in the actually quite remarkable way because what they call symmetry group is are the rotations around this central mass of the system which leave this thing figure unaltered 
what do you think it is? It is some very peculiar group. For example, I can take this axis okay, and rotate the whole figure by pi. This hydrogen will go there, that will go there, nothing will happen, right? So, it is a rotation by pi around one axis. Okay. Then you can rotate by pi around this axis, it nothing will happen. Then you can rotate by pi by the normal axis, right? Again, nothing will change. So, what happens? The symmetry, what they call symmetric group of this is a, is a dihedral group, dihedral group. I think it is called D4, yeah. And that consists of rotations 1 and rotation by pi 1, minus 1, minus 1, then it will be minus 1, 1, minus 1, then you have what? One more is possibility. What is it? Two minuses here, two minuses here. Minus one, minus one, one. Right? This is called dihedral group. There are four elements. But, sorry? Eight. No. Rotation no. No, it won't. Oh, I see. So it's only the kinetic group. It's, so that it's less. If you ask, what is the stability group in SO three of this figure? Okay. So it's not. It's not the symmetries of the square. You're talking. No, of this figure. So then, what is the, the kinetic? Kleinian, but it's called the dihedral group in crystallography. Okay, I have known this is default. Let me put it that way. But actually, this is not a group of interest. This is in SO3, right? Rotations. You ask what is a group lying in SU2, which when you go from here to here becomes this group. Okay. That is a relevant group actually. This happens to be some eight element group which is a quaternion group. But these are the poly matrices. Okay. Namely, if you so how do we find this? Actually, the interesting group is not this, but SU2, that is actually what controls rotations. Okay. So you want to know what this looks like in SU2. So when I take this and I quotient by Z2, this must go there. Okay. So, under the same Z2 quotient, this goes here. But this is non abelian. This group is non abelian, they do not commute. 8 element group, which is non abelian. So, when you start looking at quantum mechanics of ethane, you find that this plays a role, and you can see spectra which are controlled by this activity, by this group. Okay. And some very funny things happen. Okay. So, all of crystallography and molecular physics is you get all these groups octahedral group icosahedral group dodecahedral group they are twofold curves all these things come all are finite okay so they have big tables for character tables this that and so on you will find in books okay so for crystallographer or for people doing uh, molecular physics the finite groups are very important okay or discrete groups are very important but for quantum field theory, dominantly, historically, the Lie groups have played a much more important role. So we now shift there. Now, how will I describe a Lie group? And with a mathematician sitting in the audience, I'm afraid. Okay. But uh, I can, or of course, do one thing. Roughly speaking. <laughs> The group elements are parameterized okay, 
I'll try to make it more more clear. Okay, by n variables real. Call it even up to n. Okay, varying. Over an open set. Okay. I'll try to uh, over over a small range. I'm trying to say what I want to say, avoiding topological statements. Okay. What I mean is, okay, let me give examples and I'll make slightly better statements. Example will be. If you take SO3, you have Euler angles. Alpha, beta, gamma, okay. and they are varying over some small range. So, more precisely, slightly more precisely, For every neighborhood in BD's neighborhood P in the uh, in the Lie group G, there are more conditions. I'll tell you. Okay. Now I should say for every point P of a Lie group K. There exists a neighborhood containing P, okay, which okay, is homeomorphic, that is, looks like. An open set of Rn. So, for every p, for example, I can find some small neighborhood, and you can introduce coordinates here. Okay. So, the, for each p, I can introduce coordinates phi. So, looks like means these are the coordinates. Just Phi one of p, phi n of p. It is a manifold. A topological uh, Lie group is a manifold. Okay. So locally, okay, you can introduce coordinates. Okay, let me write a one. There are more conditions on this. Okay. So uh, let me call it a of p. These are the coordinate functions, and you can map each open neighborhood into coordinates. Okay. For a Lie group, this is true for every continuous group. For a Lie group, so, so can write. I, I will not require greater precision. G in G as G of A. Now, g of a, g of b is just some phi of a b. Okay. For a Lie group, we require these are sufficient, uh, sufficiently small coordinates around some point. For a Lie group, we require. Phi AB has convergent we will not use the such heavy remarks, okay. Powers, but I will say for completeness.
expansions in A and B. Okay. Around around okay. say the coordinates of this point okay. in A and B around this coordinates of the point P. Okay. So I am imagining P here these are some coordinates A or P these are called then I take two points here sufficiently close to this okay. there are two group elements there I multiply I get some phi this phi must be have power series expansions which converge to the original function in that neighborhood okay. So what this means is that these are analytic functions right once the convergence is there okay it is these are analytic functions so phi is an analytic function of a and b in some small because it is Taylor expansion is converging so you can analytically continue it in some small neighborhood you can complexify the neighborhood okay so the this last requirement is will not be put if you consider generic topological groups okay uh, which are uh, looking like rn this i don't know any, anything about them okay uh, i think there are such things okay, where the composition phi has no particular smoothness properties this is continuity am i right Yeah, if it is seen very uh, smooth, uh, yeah, that may be. I, I think there are various levels of this activity. Okay, I think, but I don't know. I think that there are various levels of activity because uh, in the infinite dimensions there are all kinds of topologies. I get, I find, when people consider, uh, uh, so I. But anyway, we are not going to be bothered. Okay, with all this. Okay, this is just to introduce you on how um, we are generalizing the situation so the dimension in this case is n okay. of g okay, is equal to n okay, as a Lie group okay, is equal to is dimension as a manifold which is n so it is a manifold okay for a generic manifold there is no requirement of phi there is no phi you can't multiply points of a manifold okay for a Lie group there is this additional structure which is compatible with this manifold property in the case of a manifold these functions are required to be, I think, infinitely differentiable. Okay. But here we require analyticity. Okay. But these are all uh, uh, sophistications which we need to worry about only if we encounter them, I think. Okay. But you also need to be able to do the expansion for the inverse as well. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I had to say yes. I have to say there is something called the group germ I think while Harman I will come to that in a minute there is there is some neighborhood you require that there is some neighborhood where the group element that is inverse are living okay. I think Potriagin has actually proof so in this neighborhood you have both a G and G inverse provided you are sufficiently close to identity okay. so so what they do is her question is take the identity and then there is some neighborhood here where both the element and this inverse are lying and where all these properties are fulfilled okay. and this is I will have reason to discuss this later and then here that kind of a relation is fulfilled for both the original group and the inverse group inverse of the group element okay. and 
from here you can translate this by multiplying the whole thing by some g h and find a similar neighborhood everywhere else. Okay. So I would say do not worry because I will next time snow you tomorrow with lots of examples so you know what I am talking about okay. and they are less complicated than all these precise definitions. Okay. So I will do that next time.